Rightio, we are at week eight rehab with Theo of his ACL. So left leg reconstructed, right one is the old one from a few years back. So that's been reconstructed too, but this is the fresh one. Now at week eight, we need to get him doing single leg work. So the first one is a step down, which is single leg squat back off a box. So the eccentric component off the box. Now, if you notice on this one, he's, he's doing well, of course, but Look at that quad working really hard here, flickering away. His VMO is coming in back really good, which is awesome, but it's still working super hard. But we, that's because we're doing single leg work and we're not loading him up, we're just doing body weight stuff. The thing about this one, this is called a regression, meaning it's not the full knee translation forward on a normal single leg squat. And the reason we're doing that is because his patellofemoral joint his quads are not really and the whole knee joint surgery is not really ready for a full knee forward load. It just starts hurting too much. So because we're just introducing this, I have put a limit on him of how far his knee is allowed to travel forward. He's got to stay within his pain boundaries. So it differs for everybody. Some people can hardly bring their knee forward. Some people go even further forward. He's about halfway in between where, if you're going back into your right one, the thing about that, I'll show you about this one, his right one, he's a little bit fatigued because he's been doing a bit of homework. Um, his right one can come forward more, which is great because it doesn't have any pain in the knee. But if you notice on his right one, his control was not as good. Now, this is because he's had three to four surgeries on this one alone. And that negative feedback of surgeries over the years has just made him lose his hip control over time. It's like a negative reinforcer. And now the pattern of movement that he has is his knee rolls in. So we've got to make sure that he really focuses on knee control when he does this in front of a mirror. Um, and again, he can't let this one go too far forward because if he goes too far forward, he's just going to roll in. And that's just going to sort of feed back a really bad pattern that's going on. We've got to try and change that. So if anything, he's not allowed to let that knee go too far forward either. Not because of pain, because of padding. This one, can you see how you can control that a lot better? Because he just hasn't had all that time of surgery. He's only had one surgery on that one. Um, but he has started off with a little bit of deficit on hip control, just not as much as his right. So, that's where we're going to keep him at the moment for the next couple of weeks. He will naturally let that go further forward as his confidence and strength allows and his pain allows. Obviously, he's not allowed to go forward if it rolls in. So if he can keep going forward and it stays in a straight line, does any pain, happy days. And that will help him strengthen that up. But the major two exercises we're going to do are with the bar, which I'll show you to help him get normal range and experience the normal range of that knee going forward. So let's go look at that. All right, so what we set up is a Olympic bar in a rack, okay? So if you're doing this in a gym, pretty easy to do, use a squat rack or a Smith machine. This just needs a bit of height that's about right for his body height. What he's now can do is let that knee go further forward. You can see he's still working his quad when he does this, but as he's discussed, it allows him to keep his knee control a little better because what he's doing is he's deloading the knee. So effectively, if you think of a weakened knee because it's had surgery on an 80 kilo body weight, if we make that less than 80 kilos, it's effectively the knee can do more, right? So the weight that he's putting through the bar is taking out of his body weight, which allows him to get that knee further forward. Now, the reason I'm doing this again is to give him experience of perfect knee control and experience of letting that knee go through range. Okay, so he's getting less fear about his knee going forward. He's also sneaking a bit of strengthening. That is completely appropriate for body weight. Okay, so we're changing the body weight. He's just putting enough through the bar, just enough to take away any pain problems or weakness problems here. All right, so it's very appropriate. As the knee gets stronger, he will put less weight through it. All right, the other thing about this is, if you notice before, his knee was rolling in. Now, his knee doesn't roll in, okay? So a lot of this is like, is it about load or is it about stability? For him, it's about stability, okay? So when we make things stable here, okay, he doesn't have to wobble around and control. He doesn't have to use his glute as much. His knee is perfectly aligned, all right? So we know that half this issue is a motor programming issue, which is fair to say, because he's had so much negative feedback going on. This one allows him to say, hey, this is how your knee is supposed to track. He's trying to train his brain. This is where the movement pad I want to do. This is how I want to do this. He's just got to make sure he doesn't babysit his knee too much with putting too much load through. You can get it fall into a trap there where you put too much load through here and there's nothing going through the knee and of course it's super easy. So he needs to put just enough 
even a touch. It might just be that he just needs a little bit of stability here. Rather than putting weight through it, he just needs to hold on to something to tell his brain to be stable. And that will keep his knee tracking right. So as he gets better, less and less and less weight to the point where he's probably not even touching. And then when he goes back to that one in the box, his knee all of a sudden magically starts tracking perfectly. So that'll be a really good one, dual purpose with this, helping the left knee bear load, getting through a normal movement pattern, allowing the knee to track forward over the foot, but he's got to keep his hip in line, his knee control, and then also for his right leg, about actually controlling the knee and getting out of that bad habit. Now, to increase the glute strength in this position, we use the ball version as well. So let's have a look at that one. So we do a one leg ball squat with the bar as well. Now this one he definitely finds hard. It's a little bit more complex because he's got to then push his right knee laterally into the ball, which is generating a glute load on the left hand side because I'm trying to get more hip in this movement. He's still deloading so he can control his knee and the weight's off his knee. So like imagine, Deloading through the bar, weight off the knee, but now I've got more glute action happening here. So while he's training that movement, while he's training his knee, he's putting a load through his hip, and that just helps things out. You can see him shaking away. He's just got to make sure that he's really pushing in this way and not offloading the knee. He's got to stay over that knee. Sometimes there's a tendency to lean on the ball and take weight off the leg. It's pretty hard, but he's really got to keep his body weight left, push his right leg right, and he's breathing hard, it's hard work, but super awesome for him. Okay, so deloading him here at the bar, okay, but touching the bar helps his knee control, but I want more through his hip. I want that neuromuscular conditioning through his hip by pushing the knee into the ball, getting that right hip working while he's in this position. So he's really reinforcing the hip control issue that he's got on the knee, meaning reinforcing good patterning, trying to get that brain activating that glute in that position so when he goes and does a single leg squat by himself, he's heaps better. And we fix up that bell whistle, knee internal rotation movement he's got going on. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, last thing to note is his range of movement, which is really good. Now, there's 90 degrees. He is right up into here, over 130. Now, this one, when he gets here, he used to have knee tightness. Now, it's quads, and his quads have always been tight. He's one of those people who's like me, always got tight quads. It's just the range of movement he's got. So this stuff is a bit more quads than knee, which is great, it's exactly what he wants. He can start focusing on quads. And if you look at this right one, it's not too far away, okay? He's only got another 10 degrees more on his right, but that's the old ACL one. He needs to work on both, okay? He needs more range than that functionally for his sport and soccer. So we want to work on both, and that's where the child's pose comes in. Come up into a child's pose for me. So this is a super important exercise for him because if he can eliminate some of the knee flexion range issues he's got in the soft tissues in his knee by doing this sort of exercise, then when he goes, does a quad stretch, the knee tightness is gone, he can just focus on his quads because at the end of the day, it'll come down to how much mobility he's got through his quads and how much range he can get out of his knee from that. So he'll be working hard on this one and then we'll see him in a couple of weeks.